What's up YouTube, Mr. Lime SC here, and today we're gonna be talking about where your build can farm. Now, I'm gonna try and cover each type of build a little bit more than go through every very specific kind of build, but I wanna discuss the different elements and the farming and the capabilities, and we'll kind of talk about like the builds that fall within all of those. Um, so this is kind of an important thing, obviously, because for many of you guys, you're like, I play a lightning source, I play a blizz source, I play a poison necro, I play a, you know, berserk bar, whatever it is. Where can I go farm? What's efficient? Um, where am I going to have trouble? All of that stuff. So, let's go ahead and kind of discuss uh, here first. I guess I actually kind of even want to go back to this page right here, and I'd rather put some text up. So let's do it that way. So this is going to be my um, recommendations kind of for each one of them. And I'll chapter this off so that we have each of those. So for a physical character, it's going to look like this. And let me actually get all of it. For a physical character, you actually have a lot of places that you can farm. Um, and the reason for this is there's not really a lot of physical immunes, right? So generally, yeah, you know, you have like your ghost, right? That's going to be like the main thing that you're going to run into that's kind of annoying uh, and would deal with that. But otherwise, physical characters really have the options to farm in a variety of areas. So you can see over here, you can go to the mausoleum, you can go to the pit, you can go to the stony tomb, the ancient tunnels, all of these really eight level 85 areas. Um, and 84s and 83s are all very farmable farmable for these characters. Now, the things that you're going to have to uh, look out for are going to be places like the Chaos Sanctuary and stuff, right? Bail running. Those are going to be difficult because you're going to have the Decrepify. It's going to slow you down. So any of those places where you're really kind of getting cursed a lot like that, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for the character. Maybe not as recommended. Even like Worldstone Keep here, I kind of tossed on, but that's like a half and half. Plus, you can have Ghosts in the Worldstone Keep on level 3. Um, and so, you know, it's not always going to be like 100% perfect. But the big thing to note is with physical characters, you really have a variety of areas. And then additionally, you can go down here. You can do the Countess. You can do Indaro. You can do Travancol and Mephisto. You can be very good with bosses as well. Obviously, you can kill like the Ubers and stuff if you want Torch Farm. Um, killing Eldritch and Shank and all of that is just going to be fantastic. Because like I said, you just get so much good physical damage, which is just going to be worth so much for these characters right here um and you you have the ability to really focus in on bosses and stuff right with crushing blow and all of that you're going to be able to really focus in on those single monsters i put iffy next to cows and this is something you should also keep in mind for just kind of general areas because a lot of physical characters on a single uh, or on a place that is surrounded by so many mobs, and the cows is a great example because there's just like thousands of cows everywhere, it can be a little difficult and you can get your character really put into faster hit recovery a lot um, and just kind of get hit a lot, right? It can be tough. So if you're like a bow is on or something, you're standing back, that's going to be a little easier. But if you are going to be, you know, a barbarian or a zealot or something, getting into the middle of all that stuff with really good gear, you'll probably be okay. But if your gear is not amazing, it's iffy. It's not great. I, I wouldn't super recommend it all of the time. Um, but that right there is kind of a good summation of places that I would consider if I was a physical character and really a physical melee character when I was running through. And so I kind of pick and choose on these, and whichever ones kind of feel good when I'm going through them, then I keep those on the list. If they're not feeling great, then I don't. Uh, and for instance, one example could be like the mausoleum. Technically, it's farmable, but there's it's so big, and there's just generally not a, a, enough bosses in there that personally, I don't like doing the mausoleum very often. Um, but it's somewhere that like you can add to that list if you would like. So we can go ahead and move on now to magical characters so magical characters are going to be probably the strongest uh and this is going to be purely because oh why is this doing like this uh all right let's take that off for now um 
they are going to just have the fewest immunities really in the game there. Um, pretty much the only mob that you're going to have to worry about is the Unravelers. That's really going to be the only magic immune that you'll have to worry about. You can also encounter the magic immune um, in, in like the, the one of the like Act 3 uh, temples or something. You can encounter like a magic immune in there and stuff. But really, it's so minimal. Uh, you, and the, the zombies in Act 2 as well. Um, so, you know, maybe you stay out of, like, the ancient tunnels, right? But other than that, uh, the biggest thing is going to be magic characters are going to be um, your bone necros. Oh, what, what was that lag? That was weird. Your bone necros uh, are going to be one. And then your hammerdens are going to be another one, right? That's going to be, like, the two main magic characters. All right, what is happening? I'm not even dropping frames. It's just like my, uh, whatever. Uh, we'll just close D2 right there. I think Diablo 2 is having some, some, some times. Anywho, moving on. So your Bone Necros and your Hammerdens uh, are really going to be like the magic damage characters that you're generally going to see, generally going to be played. Berserk Barbarian is also going to be a decent one, right? Um, and so really it opens up just such a variety here of places that you can farm. Now, something to think about, for instance, is like, if I'm a Bone Necro, Maggot Lair isn't a terrible place to farm. I can go, I can shoot my Bone Spears down the hall, I can corpse explode it, I can do a lot. If I'm a hammered in, Maggot Lair is going to be a terrible place to farm because hammers don't have the, you know, you need that big, like, open space, right? So that's something that you should really think about when you're comparing um, these things is not every build is going to be perfect just because of the elemental immunes, but you have to also think about the architectural design of every area and what's kind of good around there and stuff. So for instance, a hammered in, I love doing like the Chaos Sanctuary. It's big, it's open, there's lots of monsters, you can go in and just kill all sorts of stuff. You can do, you know, a lot of the World Stone Keep isn't bad for it. You can do... Uh, and Dariel and Mephisto and cows are fantastic and all of these places the Trav isn't bad um, Eldritch and Shank, but I'm avoiding that maggot lair I'm probably avoiding some of you know if I was gonna farm like the flare dungeon or something any of those tight narrow areas I'm probably gonna stay out of right um, Whereas like I say if I'm you know running a berserk barb or if I'm running that like uh, you know the bone necro Well, then maybe those don't matter as much to me. I feel more okay with it um, and I can get into those tight, narrow spaces a little bit easier. So these are the suggestions that I have for a magical character. Like I say, you really have pretty much all of the bosses. Um, and, you know, you're only really farming uh, Andy and Mephisto. But you also get, you know, the Countess. You can also go to Eldritch and Shank. Um, if you want, you can go to Nilithak as well with them. Uh, you can do, and, and I know that's not in the list, but I think the list was was cutting off I might even add a new list right here text Nilithak bail waves minus two um, and so bail wave number two is going to be the difficult one because that has the unravelers um, and so that is the only one that you'll have to find some other way to kill them. And this could be through your mercenary. This could be through the corpse explosion. This could be through holy bolt, which is magic damage, but it's also damage for sun dead, which the unravelers are. So it can actually go through it. Um, all of that stuff, right? So those are kind of a little difficult, but otherwise, or if you just have a partner running with you who can kill those, um, Regardless, though, uh, the the magic characters are definitely one of the strongest characters, and that's why it opens up so many possibilities here for you to run and so many things to do for your rotation when you do join a game right there. Um, also, Pindle is not on this list, I just realized. Forgot Pindle as well. Uh, but once again, for, like, the Hammered in, maybe Pindle's not as fun because he's in that, like, narrow corridor, right? So, you know, that's... Uh, something to think about right there and pindle could probably also be with the physical but that's the charging's kind of annoying so maybe not as fun um moving on let's go ahead and jump into a cold character now and this will be 
right here. So you can see once again, our, our list has uh, dropped substantially for a cold character. And this is because cold characters or cold immunities are the most prevalent and difficult nor uh, uh, and sometimes impossible, many times impossible to break. So often with a cold character, you're not going to be doing many areas because there's just going to be a lot of cold immunes. So the ones that I do recommend will be as follows. For your level 85 areas, I would say, and let me put cold at the top, I would say Mausoleum, Stony Tomb, Maggot Lair, which isn't a bad one. It's not amazing, um, but it's actually an okay area. City of the Danged and the Ancient Tunnels, with Ancient Tunnels being my favorite place to farm uh, because you're just going to go in there. It has like enough space, easy killing, all of that stuff. Um, but really, all of these are going to be decent options for your cold characters um, right there. And then, of course, additionally, you have Andaril, you have the cows, you have Travancol. You'll run into some, you know, like the cold immune, uh, the one guy, um, whatever his name is. Can't think of his name. He'll be cold immune, uh, but you can kill the other ones and they'll be fine. Once again, as well, if you have, yeah, Torch Ice Fist, whatever, Torque Ice Fist. Um, if you have... Uh, a mercenary, though, of course, that can do a little bit of damage. Or if you're dual spec and you're running cold fire or cold light or whatever, you can often take a lot of them on. Um, Mephisto is obviously fantastic as well. You can also moat trick him to cheese him. Bail waves are really solid. Wave two, you can't kill the little skellies. So you need to have either fire damage for that. Or once again, drag them a little bit further back, have the mercenary kill them. Um, and then Pindle is also very solid. So all of those can be can be great. And all of these up here aren't all area level 85. They can be area level like 81, 2, 3, 4, 5. I think Stony Tomb is actually area level 79. I'm trying to remember exactly. But these are kind of like high level areas, basically. Uh, Maggot Lair is like 83, 84, 85 or something like that. Or 83, 83, 84 or something along those lines for, for each of the levels. So just know that these are areas where a lot of the really good items can drop. You're going to find those griffins and you're going to find those, um, you know, those sorts of things. And some of the Mang songs down here, you might find a Death Fathom in some of them. Sony Tomb probably won't drop it, but the other ones might. Um, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, so this is where I'm farming for those kind of areas. And these are kind of the like other areas and, and more boss or these are like special areas or special bosses I'm kind of thinking more when I'm listing these some super uniques and some bosses and then cows is like a special area um, so this is my cold rotation for my fire rotation I'm looking at this Mausoleum, Stony Tomb, Maggot Lair, City of the Danged, Drifter Cavern, and the Icy Cellar is actually a great one. Both the Drifter Cavern and Icy Cellar, I think, are under-farmed areas. They've got those gold chests, which can be nice and can drop some good things. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, and and honestly, it's also not terrible in some areas. I also like, I really like a fire source in the Maggot Lair. Um, with the Fireball, you can really just wreck a lot of stuff very quickly, and um, that's super nice. And then additionally, down below... Um, you have these ones, and again, I can put Pindle uh, down here, and Dario, Chaos, Mephisto, Eldritch, Shank, Pindle. Um, a lot of Act 5, you'll notice Act 5, Act 5, Act 5, Act 5, Act 5. A lot of Act 5 is actually kind of weak to fire. There's a lot of, like, cold immunes, and okay amount of, like, poison and light immunes, but there's not really a ton of fire immunes in Act 5. Uh, so you can actually get away with a lot of those like super unique bosses. And if you wanted even to farm like Thresh Socket and stuff, you could go do that. I'm never someone who throws Thresh Socket into my like farming mix. So that's why he's not really listed here. But he is a potential spot that you could do. Um, and then once again, the stronger that your mercenary is, the easier it's going to be in certain areas that might have like one fire immune or something. So, for instance, the Drifter Cavern, I think, might have one fire immune uh, monster that can spawn in it. Um, and I'll actually bring up that that zones sheet at the end of this uh, to show you guys that. Um, but it's just like a good thing to take note of. So you can see that. And then um, Bale Waves can be nice, but you will run into issues with uh, the Wave 5. That can be a little difficult. 
So anyways, though, I think Fire's actually kind of a, got a little bit of fun rotation and very good at quick killing bosses as well. So I really like it for the boss kills. Now, moving into Light. Light is where we actually have a bit of a, a, a little more to talk about with it, or a lot more to talk about with it. And really, it comes down to, do you have Infinity or not? Because without Infinity, there's going to be a lot of Light Immunes all over the place, and it's kind of difficult to find great places to farm that don't have any Light Immunes. Um, literally, almost every one of the good zones has Light Immunes somewhere in it. And so you just have to kind of like skip those or, you know, have your mercenary kill them or whatever it is. But as soon as you get infinity, nearly all of those are broken and then you can murder everything. So it really opens up a ton of zones for the character. So some of the main zones for this character are going to be ones that I have listed right here. Um, and then, of course, down below, you run into more of your, like, Shank Aldrich. All those are always going to be nice. Your bosses, your cows. These are kind of, like, more without infinity, I would say. All of this stuff. Though, Bale Waves, it's a little nice to have. And then up here is a little bit more, like, having infinity will really help you um, with that, right? So, something like the Chaos Sanctuary, for example. A light source is the fastest Chaos Sanctuary killer, but having that infinity is going to really help her through. Otherwise, she's going to have to move around and skip. And sometimes she'll run into bosses that she can't break and all of that, right? Um, so definitely a big benefit and a big boost to this character. I have a video on how immunities work and how they break um, on my YouTube. And I would recommend going and checking that out if you really want to see the power of infinity. Or even a lower resist wand on your swap. Um, or your main hand can be really nice. So for instance, I like to run around with my traps in and I give her the lower res wand in her main hand when I'm speed running and then I can just cast it wherever, lowers the resistances and that helps um, break a lot of immunes and kill a lot of stuff. So can be very useful, but Light Source actually has a decent amount of cool places to farm and I think this list even opens up even more with Infinity. I think you really can go to a lot of places once you get that. Um, but this is kind of the main places that I would be looking. And then lastly, we'll jump over to poison damage. Um, and this kind of changes up a little bit. You can see I removed all of the bosses down below. And that's generally because poison is a slow killer. Uh, yes, you can do Endario, you can do Mephisto, you can do Diablo, but whatever. But it just takes a while. It's not really my most recommended thing to do for this character. These, these kinds of characters, you know, maybe like Rabies Druid or a Poison Javazon or obviously the Poison Necro is the main one I think of, is going to be much better at hitting large sums of monsters in the cows, killing, you know, Travancore, killing Eldritch and his minions and Shank, running around the Worldstone Keep. Though there are there are a lot of Poison Minions on, on level 2 of, of uh, the Worldstone Keep, so going to like level 1 and level 3 can be a little nicer to avoid um, more of those. Um, but City of the Danged, Ruin, all those temples in Act 3 can be nice. The Pit can be a good place for them. Mausoleum can be a nice place for them as well. Um, so, for instance, if I'm doing, like, my Poison Necro, my the way that I run is I go to Eldritch, and I kill Eldritch. Then I go to Shank, and I kill Shank. I go to the Worldstone Keep, and I kill the Worldstone Keep. I go to the Travancore, and I do the Travancore. And then I go, to, I go to the Pit, and I do the Pit. And then I finish off at the cows. And that's my current route. Um, now, if I wanted to, I could add in maybe some of these temples in here. Maybe I go to the city and run around the city a little bit. You know, you can throw some of those in there if you would like. Um, but you kind of get to pick and choose what feels good and what you want your route to be for every game before you want to, like, make the next game and move on and keep doing stuff. Um, so that covers each of the characters. And now I want to specifically talk about, um, uh, and I'll link this down below, but kind of zones overall. So this right here is a zone sheet that gives you good information on immunities that can spawn. Now you have to remember, every time you, you go into a level, an immunity doesn't spawn, or like all the mo monsters that can spawn in that area don't spawn, right? When you're in Worldstone Keep level 2, you might get souls. You might not get souls. 
Um, and so every zone has a list of monsters that it can spawn, and it's going to spawn three of those monsters. So this is the number of immunes that number of monsters that can spawn with certain immunities. And here, once again, like I said, if you look under lightning immunes, every zone has the ability, with the exception of the pit, which I didn't even list because it's pretty empty, to spawn lightning immunes. But with infinity, you're breaking everything. Whereas if we look at like magic immunes and physical immunes, there's very little. And so you can really be in a lot of areas for all of this, right? Um, and so, yeah, I'll have a link to this page down below and you can just kind of see, and that's for all of those. And then here you can also see the area levels of each of the areas. So the higher the area level, the more experience you're going to get when you're killing stuff in it. But then additionally, um, the better items that are going to be dropping in these areas. So getting to those 85 areas can be really nice. Even 83s and 84s, this is where you're going to find your Death Fathoms and your Griffins. And like I said, all those kind of your COAs, all those big items are going to drop in those 80s, really. Um, but... Yeah, this is, this is very good stuff to know, very good information to have, and that link will be in the description. So regardless, um, I hope that this helped you out a little bit. Like I said, the big takeaway is going to be what your element is and what the play style is for your character. I think that's the two things that you really need to note. Um, because like I say, a hammered in and the maggot lair is going to be miserable, even if there's no immunities that you have to worry about, right? Um, so note that. And then what it looks like with infinity and without infinity. And sometimes you're just in an area and you skip one pack because one of the three monsters types that spawned is fire immune. So you skip the fire immunes and you, you know, you kill the rest of the fires, and then you reset and do it again, right? So sometimes not killing every single thing is okay. But I hope that this was useful. I hope this gave you a little bit of information about your characters, where you want to farm, what you want to be doing. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, everybody. Peace, YouTube.